Welcome wrestling fans, welcome to Curtain Jerk, and as always, I'm your host, Jacob Grindy, reporting for the Main Event Marks YouTube channel and the Dragon Suplex Podcasting Network. And what a big day it has been in the world of pro wrestling. Logan Paul signed to the WWE, uh, brother of the best heel in the business, who had an impressive debut match at the biggest show of the year, WrestleMania. I'm fine with this. Saw a lot of hate online, but I think that's why they signed him, is to get hate online. Uh, he made a lot of money boxing, but he isn't a good boxer. I think he will help the WWE sell tickets. Uh, he is like a heat-seeking missile, pretty much at this point. As far as uh, people that are interested enough in him to see him as a big deal, but uh, kind of openly shit on him and mock him and make fun of him. So... He's a perfect wrestling heel in my book. In many ways, he is a bigger signing than Cody. No one who uh, watched Raw before Cody came in didn't know who Cody was. Uh, you know, after Cody came in, he didn't really move the needle too much. But I'm glad they're focusing on him. Don't get me wrong; I love Cody. Uh, Cody, as good as he is, he is not bringing in a new audience. Where Logan Paul and you know Ronda Rousey or Bad Bunny will bring in new eyes to the WWE, and uh, he, unlike Ronda Rousey, I'll say this, and uh, kind of like Bad Bunny, but a little better. He showed out at WrestleMania. He did a great job at WrestleMania. Uh, he's good in the ring. Uh, he l literally already sold out a stadium when he wrestled uh, Floyd Mayweather. Don't get me wrong, Cody is a big deal, and uh, you know when he signed, Cody Rose was trending on social media. But today, when Logan Paul signed, the word wrestling was trending, just the word wrestling. So he literally is like a tent pole. He's bringing everything up with him. Just the word wrestling was trending. Haven't seen that in a while. I wonder if Vince McMahon... Or WWE like that, of course, because they're you know they're sports entertainment, they're a media company. But no, today because of Logan Paul, wrestling was trending, which you know you got to give it to the guy. Uh, I think if the guy devotes the time and effort that he devoted into boxing, he's going to be a, into wrestling. He's going to be a really good uh, pro wrestler. Um, and there's a lot of talk about him being in Money in the Bank this weekend, and. You know, who knows? He might be in Money in the Bank, but we do know there's going to be a series of matches at Money in the Bank, and I'm going to be giving you guys my predictions on those matches. I don't watch week to week, of course. You guys know I did watch Cena. I did watch Vince McMahon cutting his promo. I did watch the Raw after Mania, but that's about it. I have watched the big shows. I do enjoy the big shows, the spectacle of it all. Bianca Belair versus Carmella. Bianca is going to win. How is Carmella's YouTube show going? I heard it wasn't going well a while back, but I honestly have never watched it or don't know. I don't know. Bianca's winning. Ronda Rousey versus Natalia Neidhart. Not excited about this one. I think Ronda's going to win. Lashley versus Theory. This is interesting. I'm going with Theory, but that is uh, because, you know, I think they're heating Theory up for Cena. But then what do you do with Lashley? Um, I mean, you kind of have Lashley and Theory kind of feud on Raw week to week when you don't have Cena at your disposal. That doesn't sound too good. I don't know. But I do like that U.S. title on Theory, and I do like that SummerSlam match with Cena versus Theory. Street Profits versus Usos. I'm going Usos. Uh, they're the guys with Roman, and Roman is the most over. So that's what I think. Women's Money in the Bank match. It would be cool to see Shotzi. Asuka won in 2020. Uh, I'm thinking it's going to be the person not yet named. Uh, and I think that person not yet named is going to be Becky Lynch. Uh, the men's Money in the Bank match. I think it should be Riddle. I think it should go to Riddle. Uh, Riddle does an honest cash-in on SmackDown. Randy Orton turns on him there. Uh, and then you have, you know, your SummerSlam matchup, Riddle versus Randy. The 
thing that I predicted last year would happen at SummerSlam. They drew it out a whole other year. I feel like Riddle is a much bigger star now. And I feel like he can finally get that rub beating Randy Orton. And that could kind of put him in the upper echelon. Where I, I hope they see him. Uh, maybe even uh, Rollins gets it. Cashes in on Reigns and brings one of those titles to Raw. Kind of playing into the WrestleMania 31 outcome. I don't know. This is all fantasy booking here. But it's either going to be Rollins or Riddle. Maybe the mystery opponent might be Roman Reigns. Somehow, I don't know, maybe, or maybe it might be Brock Lesnar doing, I know they did that a few years ago, uh, winning the money in the bank and cashing in, or it could be Logan Paul, who knows. Uh, WWE big shows have been good since Mania, so I'm looking forward to this one, Money in the Bank in Vegas, should be a fun show. AEW had a fun show as well, Blood and Guts, you gotta love seeing the two rings in the middle of the arena, just like old school. It reminds me of Fall Brawl or World War III, all the old WCW multi-ring pay-per-views. Christian Cage coming out, cutting another fire promo, and then introducing the new and improved Luchasaurus, kind of like the new and improved Chris Statlander. He's got black gear now. He's coming out more serious, but unlike the new and improved Chris Statlander, he still has that shitty gimmick they put on him in 2019. Or he came into AEW with it. I, I guess they didn't put it on him. Love seeing JR come out for the final match. It kind of uh, makes the match feel bigger. And then, you know, kind of saving JR is kind of cool as well. But I did rank every single match from worst to first from this episode of Dynamite. This special episode, Blood and Guts. Number five, Luchasaurus versus Supernetico. Luchasaurus just kind of chokes Supernetico out and wins the match. I would be kind of pissed. If I was on that side of the arena where that ring is closest to me, because you know they were alternating uh, going back and forth. So the first ring had the first match on the show, which is pretty good. Then the second match was this match where a guy just pretty much got ch choked out. And then the third match was pretty good as well. So uh, I feel like this first hour, the uh, second ring was this the the crowd facing. The second ring, or closest to that second ring, was getting snubbed a little bit here. Jade and Layla Gray. Jade makes short work of Layla. Statlander and Athena end up coming out, and uh, they get worked. Uh, the baddies beat up the good guys. I feel like all Athena's done in this entire time in AEW is get her ass whooped by Jade. And then the jobber helps. Layla, who just got her ass beat by Jade, helps the baddies. In beating the good guy's ass. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe there's a new baddie. Red Velvet wasn't there. Uh, with Hogan and Stokely Hathaway. And Jade tonight. So maybe there's a new baddie in the in the mist. Uh, number 3 out of 5. Orange Cassidy versus Ethan Page. Uh, Ethan Page underused in, in AEW. Uh, but could not get the victory here. Orange Cassidy. Get, does one two three uh number two out of five here caster and gun club versus dan Housen and a mystery partner caster's rap always hilarious ftr ended up being the mystery opponents to team up with dan Housen. uh stereo germans from ftr they they're, they were a surprise they came out and they stole the show right here Bowens, though, reveals he can walk, gets in the ring, tries to hit Danhausen with a crutch. Danhausen ducks. Austin gets a crutch to the face. Danhausen gets the pin. One, two, three. They they bicker after the match. The acclaimed, the gun club, bickering back and forth. And then Daddy Gun, the ass man himself, pushes Austin Gun down. And kind of sides with the acclaimed here a little bit here in this little t tussle they had. I don't know where they're going with that, but I'm pretty interested in that. I like this, the acclaimed gun club thing. I like it. I didn't think I would. I didn't think it would be that big of a deal. But it's been a few weeks now, and I love it. I love it. Especially now with this new element of uh, Bowens actually needing, not needing to be in a wheelchair. 
But of course, the best match on the show, Blood and Guts. I mean, it was the name of the show. It was the whole damn show, the final match. This match was wild as hell. Love the video package. Claudio and Sammy Guevara starting things off. Sammy Guevara very cleverly and athletically avoiding Claudio until Garcia could come in. I thought that was pretty good. Garcia coming in with a goddamn do-rag on, looking ridiculous. Then Wheeler, Hager. Hager had a nice moment with Claudio. People chanting, we the people. I enjoyed it. Mox comes in throwing chairs, stabbing Garcia with a fork. Parker, Ortiz, Daddy Magic, they all enter the match. It's filling up now. It's getting violent. Uh, more so than I thought AEW would get violent. They had like spots with broken glass. They had a skewer spot. That's right, Masada, eat your heart out. Moxley is stealing your gimmick live on TV, stabbing uh, Matt Menard in the head with the skewers. It didn't work, uh, or it worked. The man was bleeding all over the place as far as a violent act, but it didn't work like if you've seen it before where they kind of spread on the person's face like a, a violent Chia pet or something. Uh, Santana bringing in a table. When he comes in, he also brings in a bat wrapped in barbed wire. Jericho and Eddie, last guys in. Uh, one ring is getting ripped up, so the boards are exposed, while the other ring has tacks all in it. Uh, just a wild scene here. Walls of Jericho to Mox while they're both laying in the tacks. Uh, Jericho goes up top. Eddie follows him. Sammy Guevara goes up there. Kingston throws... Sammy off onto an obvious crash pad. This was the one part of the match where I kind of just rolled my eyes. I understand you want to be safe, so you put the crash pad, but if it's going to look that weak, then why do a spot like that anyways? Especially after last year where Jericho did a spot like that, ended up getting legit hurt, and then the spot got buried on, on social media. So I, I'm surprised they went back to something like that, especially when it looked uh, ridiculous as it did. Cesaro goes up top, big swing on top of the cage. That would be scary as fuck. I don't know if I'd trust anyone to do that to me, including uh, Claudio or Cesaro, whatever you'd like to call him. But Jericho, I, you know, breaking the fourth wall, Jericho trusted Claudio's strength to spin him around on top of that cage. That, that looked wild. Uh, Menard goes up and taps out to Claudio before... Eddie could get Jericho to tap out. They both had their respective opponents in in submissions at the same time. Eddie looked a little disappointed. He couldn't tap Jericho out. The announcers made mention of it, but this was a great match, wild match. Um, when I first tuned in, I thought it was going to be first, but there's no way anything could be following this match on this show. Uh, they did it well. They had a nice little first hour of some fun matches, just getting people over, and then the spectacle of blood and guts. It was, it is War Games. I mean, I loved War Games. War, Fall Brawl 96, the reason I'm a wrestling fan to this day, WCW Sting, NWO Sting. It was cool. I loved it. The birth of the anti-hero Sting, the black and white Sting that we all know and love today. I love it. I love it. And seeing uh, Blood and Guts, the new uh, rendition of war games is cool it's just really cool uh you know they didn't do as many spots on top of the cage and they definitely weren't like whipping out glass and tacks and stabbing each other with skewers but this is the progression i feel like if they had done a war games every single year from those old wcw days into now it would get to this point where it was something like this so it's you know we might have skipped a few decades but we kind of picked up where we left off and we brought some of the the new into this classic environment i love the shit out of it uh, i love pro wrestling i love logan paul i mean come on i've always said the paul brothers were the best heels in the business and here they are on the biggest stage of the business you gotta love it i want to see uh, paul versus the usos that's worth uh me making up another email and getting a 30-day free trial of Peacock, if you ask me, fly high, I'm out.